My name is uh, Dr. David Sine Bannis. I run the uh, the uh, scoliosis center at St. Joseph Medical or St. Joseph Children's Hospital. And today I'm giving you a lecture on backpacks and its effect on uh, adolescent uh, back pain. Uh, I began this actually I began this this study several years prior. And the reason I, I began the study is that a lot of a lot of mothers uh, come to me very concerned about their kids uh, carrying these large backpacks back and from school. Uh, and there's a reason why that's changed over the years. That didn't really happen when I was in school, and when, uh, but it's changed over the last or several years as lockers have come out of schools and schools have gotten larger. There's this overall misconception that, that kids don't have pain or don't suffer from at least the, uh, the non-specific back pain that we all, all seem to suffer from. Um, and that it may be related to attention sinking in the younger child, uh, that it's uncommon. Um, and if it's really severe, and that, that it could be, that it's more likely related to something more serious than this nonspecific pain. So it kind of gets disregarded um, to many of the medical community, at least in the past. I think that's changed. I think that's changed from the literature, and I think it's changed overall. And I think bat larger uh, these backpack issue is what somewhat changed the issue of, of back pain in children. Uh, the concept that is at least adolescent children. Uh, do suffer from back pain, and that nonspecific back pain that we suffer from, that weight-induced back pain. And it can be chronic, and it can be recurrent. It could have all those nasty things that we suffer from. So is society neglecting these children or neglecting the presence of back pain in these kids? So this is why I think this, is, this has come to a, a, a bigger, blown up over the last maybe 10 years. When I went to school, there was lockers. When I went to school, my school was small enough that I can get to my locker at every class. That doesn't happen anymore. When I did the study, it was in California. I couldn't find any schools who didn't who had lockers. I wanted to do a control study versus someone, you know, locker schools with lockers, schools without. I couldn't find at least public schools with lockers. Uh, and the reason they removed them originally was for vandalism, safety issues. You know, kids were hiding things apparently in the lockers and graffiti on the lockers. For one reason or another, they were moved from a lot of these schools. In the same light, the textbook have gotten heavier. The classes have gotten more, uh, are bigger, larger, and, and classrooms have gotten larger, and, and the textbooks uh, have gotten thicker. Um, and the larger schools make it harder for even classes or even schools with lockers to get there. In Florida, there are lockers in many of these schools. What I hear from the, the, the kids, though, is they can't get to the, the locker. Uh, they surely can't get to them between every class. Mothers came to me and said, what do you think about this backpack issue? And what backpack do we use? And, and, and that's what came about to, uh, uh, to drive a study that, that, I, that I did and it was published uh, several years prior. I mean, it went as far as it was on 2020, it was on Oprah. Um, the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery indicated 58% of uh, orthopedists were indicating that there was backpack issues among their uh, patients. And, uh, so it became to become more of a national concern. So what happened from there was guidelines were, were driven by, I think, media attention, by, by pushing from, from the, you know, the population and these concerns. So the two big academies, the Academy of Orthopedic Surgery and the Academy of Pediatrics, came out with guidelines saying uh, less than 20% of your body weight, that the backpack should not weigh more than 20% of your body weight. Uh, and you know it should be appropriately carried with two straps and they made these guidelines the problem was that there was at that point no study to really validate that these guidelines uh, were were valid is there a consequence of having back pain as a child into an adulthood well that's kind of hard to determine but there at least there's one danish study that i found that indicated that uh, there was a high level of adults with disability meaning the loss of work hours and chronic back pain that was associated with back pain in an adolescent. So there was some relationship between pain as an adolescent, not necessarily from backpacks, but pain in general. So what is the influence of backpacks on the rising rate of back pain among school children? So this is a study that I performed, um, and one of the, here are the several of the goals that we, we had. We obviously want to know, did the back pain, is it associated with backpacks? We wanted to know, uh, were there other factors? And there often is other factors, clearly. Uh, gender, age, the weight of the backpack, or, uh, the duration, how long did you wear it, severity, method of wear, and where it hurt, the location of pain. So I took, uh, I, l I invited a bunch of schools to join into this study. I had four large schools, and these are middle schools because that seemed to be the age group where kids were starting to complain of more back pain. You didn't really get it in the grammar school years, they're more protected, and they weren't carrying those, they weren't having those school loads that came about in uh, the middle schools where it pretty much starts. 
Uh, so four large schools, age groups from 11 to 15, and this is a lot of children, 3,498 children. I still think this is the largest study. There's been other studies uh, out there, but this is probably one of the largest, if not the largest study that I could find. So we took one day at each school, it was a, a marathon day, and we did it during their PE class. None of the children had knowledge of this, and that was important because I didn't want them, you know, if you tell a child we're going to wear your backpack tomorrow, they're going to do something to their backpack. They're going to pull things out. They're going to, I didn't want anything um, altered. Three of the four schools, this is important, told me that they had issued two sets of books. That means because they're state-driven or they're public schools, that taxpayer money had bought two, two sets of books so that they were allowed to have a book at home and a book at school but that was not enforced. So that's important to know, we'll talk about that. So the first thing I did is I had them all sit down, they all thought they were going to gym class, and filled out a questionnaire. Basically a long questionnaire to kind of, uh, questions derived five studies that they've done in the past, and uh, some societies had picked some uh, studies in the past that indicate how bad's the pain, um, if you miss school activities. You know, it hurts pretty bad for a child to miss the sports activities they like, or to go to a doctor, because they don't want to go to a doctor. So it kind of gives you a severity scale. And we also asked them how severe it was. Uh, the method of uh, duration, did you, hear it, did you hear it with one or both shoulders? Do you walk to school? And these questions are specifically related to the backpack, meaning do you feel pain when you wear the backpack? And I thought this was another good question. Do you feel relief when you take the backpack off? I thought that helped validate the fact that it is associated to the backpack. We also asked if they had any other personal items in the backpack. We took the ages, whether male or female, uh, and the, the grades, which the grade of the school, which was more influenced by the age. So after I got the whole, the whole survey down, all the demographics down, I weighed them. And, and basically what we did, I and my team, we weighed, we weighed the backpack, and then we weighed the child. The only thing I did ask for the child to do was to take, the, the, take their shoes off. So then basically, I was able to get a, weight, a body weight per backpack, you know, percentage of, percentage of uh, body weight. So here's our results. 64% reported low back pain. These are kids from 11 to 15 years old. And even if you feel that they all, some of them might have exaggerated, 64% is a staggering amount. 41% know that pain was specifically with carrying the backpack. All reported, all the people who, all the kids who said I had pain when I carried a backpack, all of them reported that they had relief when they took it off. Here's the big point. There was no difference between the schools that had two sets of books versus only one set of book. And the reason why is it wasn't enforced, meaning that a child that age group doesn't really put it together for some reason, likes to carry their own book, whether they write in them or whatever, they'll carry that same book back and forth. They don't, it doesn't matter if they have two sets. If you can't enforce for them to keep one book home and one book at school, it's irrelevant. Uh, these counties were having taxpayer money driving two sets of books that was having no, no factor or no relevance whatsoever. Um, the severity pain was a big issue too. 87% of their pain was bad or very bad. So it wasn't like I'm mildly discomfort. It was hurting them. And there was at least 16 to 17% of kids at least either missed school sports that they enjoyed or saw a doctor because of the pain. It's just about every study that's done on backpacks indicates that girls have more likely to report back pain than boys. The average weight was only 11 pounds, but we, that's kind of deceiving because there was such a, such a, a wide variance of it. And we had kids up to 37 pounds. We had up to 44% of your of backpack uh, body weight. The duration, which kind of makes common sense also, that the more you wear the backpack, the more you're going to complain of pain. So kids who, who walked, back at, uh, walked to and from school had more back pain than kids who didn't. Um, this was a little bit different. There was no relationship in, in back pain and in, in how, you, how you wore it meaning if you had one strap versus two straps, didn't matter. And I know that's a, a big deal for most people, uh, whether, you know, put them both on your shoulder um, uh, versus one versus the other. It didn't seem to mean as much clearly as than how much weight's on your back. So the summary of, of uh, the study and, and obviously the review of the literature is um, weight clearly, the weight of the backpack clearly influences back pain in this age group. How long you wear the backpack clearly influences back pain, so if you're walking back and forth from school. Uh, there was no absolute safe backpack weight, but again, you know, the less the better. Um, but if you're going to wear a backpack, you probably want it 10 to 15% is probably your safer, your safer number. Adolescent girls are more susceptible to back pain from backpacks. 
how you wear your backpack is less important than what's, what's in your backpack and how heavier it is. Uh, there are many other things in your backpack that we probably all understand that has nothing to do with education and that's also adding to the weight of your backpack. So I guess this is a good statement. I, the, the physical maturity may play a role in reporting backpack pain in adolescence. Um, and those undergoing periods of rapid growth are more susceptible to, to nonspecific and possibly load-induced back pain. And that's what I think the girls are like, more likely, at, at least in that age group, um, had more susceptible to back pain than, than boys. I think if you went two years farther, three years for, farther, it would probably equal out. So what are some solutions? And unfortunately, there's no like simple solution to this. Number one is eliminate the non-educational items. Other solutions, this is more of the uh, educational solutions would be a lighter computerized uh, resources. If I found a way to enforce that they used the two sets of books, would, did it make a difference? Because that would be a, a solution. The rolling backpacks, um, it seems like a good solution because it, first of all, it gets the, the weight off your shoulders and really that's the most important thing. Uh, it can be a little bit dangerous and some of the schools around here don't, don't let you use the rolling backpack. Kids are tripping over them, they're leaving them over. I, th I think they could do that with any backpack, but um, carpooling. This might be a little extreme, but carpooling is a good idea. <laughs> because, you know, if, the, if your kids, if your child's walking back and forth, and depending how long the distance is, that can be a big solution just to get them, get it off their backpack or, or get it off their backs for that period of time. Uh, schools with lockers, you know, it'd be nice to have the, the educational system move their classes around where the locker is if they're in schools that big. That is, that never happens, you know. No one says your locker is here, so your classes should be, you know, it, it would probably be very difficult, but it might be a solution.